All right. Well, let's go ahead and, and get started. Um, so wanted to, to thank you all for, for being here uh, with us today. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is James Owen. I'm a policy analyst in, in the mayor's office. And on behalf of my colleague, Derek Rainey, and, and my two colleagues here, Devin and Johanna, we wanted to, to welcome you to the third of a series of three webinars that we've been doing um, in collaboration with CFPB Materials, the Consumer Protection Financial Bureau Materials, and Devin and Johanna with, with ICF. Um, and uh, we just wanted to, to thank you for, for spending a little bit of your afternoon with us today. Um, like I said, this is the third of three trainings, and today we'll cover cash flow uh, budgeting. And so how can you make your, your uh, money last throughout the month and, and be strategic in, in your spending and your bills to make sure that, that you have enough money to, uh, to you know, make all your obligations? And we know that, that that matters for your personal finances. And as a lot of you are, are interested in small businesses, that matters for your business finances. So I hope that, uh, and, and you know, trusting in, in my colleagues who are some of the smartest and, and best people I know, um, that, that they'll get you a lot of um, good information. So um, I did, since this is the third in a series of three, I did want to share the link to the city's YouTube page where you can find the other two recordings in case you did not get those previously. Um, the last thing I, I will say uh, before I hand it over to Johanna is that um, if you feel comfortable and if you are in a place um, where you would like to turn on your camera, we would love for this to be interactive. And, and um, you know, if you have questions as we're going through it, um, feel free to, to interrupt us. And we will also try to have a um, question and answer section at the end. Um, but with that, I will stop talking. Again, thank you so much for being here. And I'll hand it over to Johanna. Thank you, James, so much for the introduction. And uh, thank you all for being here with us today. I just um, shared also in the chat, I think, um, a link to our pre-training survey. So before we get started, we wanted to ask that you please uh, complete the pre-training survey on the screen. And there is a few ways that you can do that. You can uh, use a, a QR code. Um, uh, the QR code on the screen, you can use a scanner app on your phone to access the survey. Uh, you should be able to use your camera for that. Or you can copy and paste or type the URL on the screen um, into any browser to access the survey. And we're going to give people just a, a few moments to pull up the survey and fill it out um, before we begin. All right, if you have any questions, let us know uh, if anyone is having accessing the survey, do let us know in the chat. Okay, so um, we can move on. Um, all right, so thank you all for joining and um, we wanna welcome you into today's training on your money, your goals, tools uh, for cash flow budgeting. My name is Johanna Barrero and I am joined by my colleague, Devin Stubblefield and who will be uh, will be presenting the content today. And Devin and I work for ICF. And we are, um, ICF is a contractor, contractor that works uh, with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or the CFPB um, on the savings initiative. And for the past year or so, we have been working with our colleagues here at the city of Little Rock to promote financial empowerment in your community. And in today's training, we will cover some hands-on financial well-being tools um, to help you keep track of your income and expenses and create a cash flow budget. And, you know, before we, we start the formal presentation, I'd like to go over the CFPB, which basically um, states that this presentation is being made by a representative on behalf of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or views um, stated here are the presenter's own and do not represent the views of the. And this uh, pre uh, links to third party resources, but does not meant by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau of those third party resources, products or services. Next, um, I wanna tell you a little bit about Protection Bureau. Uh, the CFPB is a federal 
government agency that aims financial markets work for consumers, for responsible providers, and the economy as a whole. And to achieve this vision, the CFPB works to empower consumers by creating tools, answering questions, and providing uh, tips and materials that help consumers navigate their financial choices works for them. The CFPB also uh, protects consumers from unfair, deceptive, or abusive practices and takes action against uh, predatory companies and practices that violate the law and have already returned billions of dollars to harmed consumers. And it also encourages financial education and uh, financial capability from childhood through retirement. So the CFPB publishes research and educates financial companies about their responsibilities. All right, so today we're going to review some tools uh, from the Your Money, Your Goals um, suite of products. And Your Money, Your Goals includes a variety of resources available to the public. It has a toolkit which provides comprehensive information for uh, practitioners and consumers. Um, the toolkit is not a curriculum, is uh, a set of tools that can help uh, people with their personal finances when they're facing particular uh, situations. And it also, uh, this suite of products also includes a set of companion guides, uh, as you can see on the screen. Um, and those help address the unique uh, needs of um, uh, communities like the native communities, people with uh, a, a criminal record, uh, people with disabilities and the military community. So it targets those um, specific communities and their unique uh, needs. And the suite of products also contains a set of four uh, booklets that can help you address being behind on bills, dealing with debt, understanding credit, and saving. So four booklets that focus on those uh, four topics. And two of them are also available in Spanish. They are the ones on behind on bills and want uh, credit to work for you. All right. And the Your Money, Your Goals uh, tools and resources, like the ones that we're gonna talk to you about um, today, really seek to build consumers' financial empowerment. And you will hear us talk about financial empowerment throughout this presentation. You may also hear us talk about financial literacy and financial education. So what do we mean uh, by financial empowerment? And how is that different from financial education or financial capability or other commonly uh, used terms? Well, while financial empowerment includes the concept of financial education, it goes beyond the idea of simply acquiring knowledge. Um, the focus of financial empowerment is that uh, a person build their skills um, that they need to manage money and learn how to choose the the financial products and services that work best for them. So when someone is financially empowered, they are both well-informed and skilled at using that information. They know where to get help um, with their financial challenges and they can access and choose those products and services that best meet their, meet, meet their needs. Um, so is the, this, is, uh, this, is, this sense of empowerment is what builds that confidence and helps uh, effectively use their knowledge and skills to um, reach their goals, their financial goals um, specifically. All right, and so with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague Devin, who will um, talk a little bit more about financial well-being. All right, uh, I want to thank you, Johanna, and also thank you to James. I'm glad to be here with all of you, and so we're just going to go ahead and get into our topic here and. You know, I want you guys to think about financial well-being. Now, Johanna just explained the concept of financial empowerment. And, you know, and that is the combination, as she mentioned. But when we talk about financial well-being, this is what you want to feel every single day. And so we've got a couple of things that we want to point out here. And, uh, and as you look at this, this slide, we're talking about a state of being reflecting your ability to meet your current and ongoing financial obligations. 
And we want you to feel secure in your financial future and then make choices that allow you to really enjoy your lives. And so we got this, this matrix here. And so I want you to think about, we have present day security where you have control over your day-to-day month-to-month finances. And that's where that cash flow uh, conversation is going to come in, making sure that you are good with how things are coming in and how you're paying for stuff and all of those things. We're, we're talking about present day security. And when you do have that present day security, it could bring a freedom of choice. Well, that means you could do things and make decisions that are relative to what's valuable to you, you know, what, what things mean to you. So we're actually managing our finances around the things that are meaningful. And so when we, when we got control, we can do that. But at the same time, we have to think about, well, how do we go from today, point A to point B, some point in the future? So we got future security that we have to understand. But then with that, it is also the capacity to absorb a financial shock. Now, we know that the pandemic brought a tremendous amount of hardship on a lot of people, a lot of businesses, a lot of personal, I mean, you name it. There was all kind of things going on that really impacted the finances. So so the question is, how many people were able to absorb that shock? And what happens is when, when you're able to keep your finances in a place where as you progress towards the future and you're, you're able to have the resources or the ability to absorb some of the unexpected things that happen, you also can be on track to meet your financial goals, which is also the future freedom of choice. And so that could mean some of you who may be looking at doing certain things, buying additional inventory for your business, or it could mean buying uh, things for your personal, even could be buying a home or buying another vehicle or things. We're talking about your ability to continue to do this stuff. And so when we talk about financial well-being, we're talking about it today, present day, and we're talking about tomorrow in the future. So this financial well-being equation has to be thought about from both perspectives. And so there is a tool um, that we use for financial well-being. There's two tools. One is an income and benefits tracker, which you'll see on the left-hand side of the screen. And, and by the way, uh, James will make these tools available to you, um, you know, once we finish up with this, with this training today. But I got to tell you, these tools are amazing. And if you use them, it can help you to really start to feel like you're able to track stuff. And not only that, but notice on the right-hand side, we have the spending tracker. Now, I don't know about you, but a lot of people are using apps you know, or online methods to kind of see what's going on in the moment. But what about when you sit down to actually plan out things? What about when you're, when you're trying to think about, you know, the, the, the processes that you go through every month to manage your personal finances? And you guys know, if, you know, sometimes there, you know, there's this whole thing between managing what's going on on the personal end and then also managing what's going on on the business end. You're doing both. You're doing both simultaneously. I believe James calls this money scales. <laughs> so uh, it's it's really um, an amazing thing. And I had to give him credit for that. I really liked when he said that the other day, but it's money scales. And that's what it boils down to. And so I want you guys to think about really getting into these tools and, and, and starting to just strategically plan out when things are going to happen or when you're going to make things happen from a financial perspective. Now, we can't talk about cash flow without talking about possibly having to cut some expenses, right? So we want to make sure that we can do this. So there is another tool that is designed to help you to have money for what you need most. So sometimes we got to make some decisions. And so when, when you start thinking about setting some time aside to go through you know, your expenses, this particular tool gives you some, some recommended strategies that you can consider. Now, some of these are going to apply to you. Some of them may not. But what it does do, it gives you an idea of the concept of what do I need to do to cut some expenses, if you can, right, so that you can have more money available to do some of the other things you want to do. Now, I get it. We hear this all the time as uh, Johanna and I, we train 
um, this content in a lot of different places around the country. And sometimes we hear that people say, well, there's really not a lot of money to cut. There's not a lot of things to cut. I'm already at the minimums that I can do. And we get it. And so one of the great things about this is we have another tool that maybe says, well, maybe if you can't cut stuff, maybe you can actually determine when you pay stuff, move stuff around to align it to when your income is coming in. And I know that we understand that from just base, a basic understanding of finance, but sometimes putting it into practice is a different thing. <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is make sure that we can do this. So when um, a little bit later on in the presentation, we're going to go through this document here. This is a cash flow budget. We're going to talk about how to do that. And um, this also is a tool that you're getting. And this is one of those fillable PDF tools where you can just type right into it and then it calculates everything for you. But the point is when we talk about, well, what can we do to actually increase our financial well being? especially starting with the concept of cash flow, then these tools are going to help you to do that. And so we are very happy to be able to show you this and really help you to take advantage of these things. But we have a poll that we like to do. So we're gonna ask James if he wouldn't mind launching that poll. And here it is, the question is, and if you can't see the poll for, for whatever reason, type that in the chat and let us know. It says, how are you currently monitoring your personal cash flow? Let us know what are you doing, either through an, your online banking app, through, through budget tools you may use offline, or maybe you're not monitoring your cash flow at all. Okay, so we just want to see kind of where you're at with this. All right. Okay, well, Johanna, it looks like uh, most people are actually um, using tools offline. <laughs> so, which is all right, right? Which is, you know, the, the tools that we're talking about today, you know, these are kind of like offline tools that you use. They're not connected to an app or, or a bank or anything like that. They're connected to uh, you, basically. And so, it's all good. We want to say thank you guys for doing that. But here it is. Here is the results. So you see, we're seeing that 67% of you are using your own budget tools. And so hopefully today, uh, between what Johanna and I share with you, that you can have some more ideas around this. I'm going to turn this back over to Johanna. Johanna, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you for that, um, Devin. And I think, uh, you know, even if we use uh, using an app, um, to see what's going on, it is always um, a little different when you sit down to plan ahead. Uh, it's not just seeing what's going on, but really expect and when to expect things to happen. So I'm going to talk a little bit about income now. And, um, you know, the serials in the, you know, this particular set of tools that were um, because we're talking about cash flow, we want to focus both on income and spending. And then, you know, Devin will walk us through, through the tool that helps us see the whole, the entire picture. But um, when we talk about income, we're really from various, and we're going to talk about some of them. Part-time or full-time work, self-employment, if you if you have your own business uh, or, uh, or you do your work um, as a self-employed, it can be, um, you know, and it can come from, from other sources too. Income though, is that it can be regular if someone has, you know, full-time or part-time employment, but it can, um, even when you have a job, uh, part-time or hourly, um, hours may vary and uh, that's harder, that makes it harder to keep track. And jobs can also be seasonal, one-time occurrence. So let's think for a moment how these different kinds of income can really impact your budget and cash flow. I want you guys to reflect for a moment about your own situation. Um, and I also want to mention benefits because benefits are a little different in um, 
they are important financial resources and cover some very essential living expenses for a lot of people. Um, and for some of them, they are uh, an important. Uh, but why, uh, why is it important to track benefits um, the same way that you track your income? Uh, because mainly benefits aren't as flexible as income. You know, they usually um, specific things. So while they can be an important part of your budget, there are some limitations on how you can use, uh, use them. For example, if, uh, if a person qualifies for, um, for a supplemental nutrition assistance program or SNAP, uh, they can only use those benefits to purchase uh, groceries. All right, so let's take a look at some of the methods for receiving income as well as the benefits and risks that are associated with each. And, uh, you know, a person can be paid in cash, with a paper check, through direct deposit, through payroll cards, uh, benefits, or EBT cards. Uh, government benefits and EBT cards are a little different. Government benefit cards um, tend to have full federal consumer protections in case there's an unauthorized transfer or if there are any errors. Uh, while an EBT card, uh, which is one kind of one type of government benefit, is usually, you know, it's used for programs that are funded by the federal government, but are administered by the state, right? Such as TANF and SNAP and other benefits. And they may not have the, the same protections of unauthorized transactions. So let's look at some of the benefits and risks their methods for getting paid. Um, have heard already about cash uh, related to using cash. So there's always that benefit of easy access of money, but then the, the risk is really, it can get lost, it can get stolen. Uh, it makes it really easy to spend if you are already having trouble budgeting or saving. Um, and it can be harder to track for you know, your personal, your business, or your tax purposes. Um, paper be deposited into an account. They can be low card, and that presents some advantages. Reduce. Um, they go into a bank or credit union directly. Uh, but they can also charge fees. The fees associated with using, uh, you know, depositing account and. Um, there, there may, uh, uh, yeah, there may be some. Um, the main advantage is that you really are reducing the risk or theft when the fund, then you may not um, need to uh, pay for check cashing fee, usually available immediately. Uh, but there may or may not. Um, where the funds get transferred to, like if they get transferred to a prepaid account. And uh, we, for example, if you have insufficient funds in the account and you use your account, that may carry some of those fees. Or there may be using your ATM uh, to access the, ca the cash. Um, and then payroll cards can be more secure and have full federal case of any unauthorized transfers, uh, but also like potentially in activity fees, uh, you may have to go to the ATM to get the cash, et cetera. So I'd like to uh, take a how do you prefer to get paid? And if you wanna share in the chat, just let us know how you prefer to get paid and, and why. By cash, by per deposit, payroll. Uh, there you go. Thank you, James, for entering that. So feel free to share your uh, thoughts. And then I'm going to talk about um, this tool on choosing how to get.
And now we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna talk about the income and benefit tracker, which is the next tool. So uh, payment methods are important because they can um, impact how and when you can access your money. So let's take a look at income tool on the screen. And this tool can help you complete your picture of your income and benefits and can help you plan when to pay your expenses, right? Um, the tool lists some of the income and benefits organized by category. So we have income from a job, child support, disability benefits, SNAP, TANF, and other benefit programs. And again, we include benefits uh, because we think it is an important, uh, it's important to keep in mind, you know, that, well, income, uh, for example, from a job or anything, uh, benefits may only be used for specific purposes. And in this tool, you will also see the word net income. And this is important because it refers to the actual amount that you bring home from your paycheck. Um, it's your total pay after taxes, insurance, and other deductions are taken out. So when we do, uh, when we talk about cash flow, we definitely want uh, to record net income as opposed to your gross income. All right, and next you get, you'll see here a closer look of the tool and notice that it breaks down the month uh, by week. So you can record your income on the week of the month when it comes in. Uh, in this particular example, we see, you know, this person receives $200 from a job, $400 from SNAP benefits on week one. They get a combined 1200 from their job on week two, again, and again on week four, and then they receive $200 from their job on week three. And the next page um, shows you the bottom part of the page, right? Again, these are fillable tools that you can use to enter the amounts, and it'll calculate the numbers for you. Um, so here we can see the uh, weekly income, 600 for week one, 1,200 week two, and so on for a total of $3,200 net income a month. And we just focus on the income portion of this person's cash flow. We talked about income, we talked about we can get paid and what are some of the limitations of you know, risks and benefits of each. Um, but again, as Devin mentioned earlier, there are tools that can help you with the spending portion too, which is the other side of, of cash flow. And in a, uh, and Devin will walk us through the, the, the cash flow budget uh, in a minute, which combines both income and expenses. So with that, um, oh, thank you, uh, Clara, for saying direct deposit, that's great. And let me hand it over to Devin. All right, thank you, Johanna. I uh, really appreciate what you've done here to kind of get us set up here for this. And um, for the rest of you, it's really about as you see on the slides about getting through the month. And you know, some months are better than others, right? We, we um, just depends on what we got going on and you know, the kind of expenses that come up. But then, you know, there are always expenses that show up that we don't you know, account for. And so let's, let's see how we can really make this right uh, from a cash flow perspective. And so I want you guys to think about a cash flow budget um, and how that might be different from a regular budget. And what I want to be able to, to do is, is have you think about when we think about a regular budget, okay, it gives you the income all listed out and then it totals it. Then it gives you the expenses all listed out with a total. And then you do the math. Um, and that is traditionally how we were taught how to budget. You just list all the known income and expense sources, do the math and see where you're at. Well, that is okay as a start, but what we want to do is talk about a cash flow budget and to begin to project money you expect to come in, how much you think you'll spend each week, and when you expect your expenses to occur. So we we want to we want to contrast this with uh, the regular budget because a cash flow budget, what it does differently, it tracks the timing, and that is what the key is. It's all about timing. And so I want you to think about, as we go through this, think about what 
may be the benefit of really getting a handle on the timing. Now we know that, you know, on average we have 30 days in a month, but the question is, you know, when are the days and times of the month, um, do we have a surplus versus the days and times of the month where we might be at a deficit? And that is a real conversation that we must have with ourselves. And so the CFPB put together this tool, creating a cash flow budget, which I'm going to um, actually, we're going to use a particular case study. We're going to look at a, a scenario so that you can see how this could potentially work. Now, you guys remember back in the day when you had, in a, and you, some of you probably still use checkbooks, and you have a checkbook register where you start at the beginning and you have a balance of funds available. So that goes at the top. And as you can see, what I want to share with you here is that you'll notice that uh, on this particular graphic here, we have the same kind of thing going on where we have a particular right here, starting balance, we have the $250 you see here in the actual box there. So we start out with that. And then from there, we add in what we get. Like here, we got $300 came in, another $100 came in. This is all in week number one, right? We're, we're still in this one week. So now we had a total of $400 come in, but we started out with $250. So now what we do, we have now $650 that is available for week number one. Well, it doesn't stop there because now we got to consider the expenses, $200 going out for something, $35 going out for something else, and $15 going out for even another thing. So we spent um, this $250 right here. So what happens is we end up at the end of week one with a $400 balance. Now, a regular traditional budget won't show this. And, and that's what we're trying to get at. And so when you guys are thinking about your own personal cash flow, it's really about getting control. We're, we're talking about controlling it on a week by week basis. And that is the beauty of this tool. So you can see here, as we have $400 left over, this $400 that we're talking about right here, that is actually carried over to the top of week number two, where we now start out with week number two with $400 in the positive. All right. And so that is the theory behind working with a cash flow budget. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at a particular um, scenario, and then we're going to see what this particular cash flow budget looks like. So we've got Raphael. Raphael is a single parent with two children. He's often late on his rent and other bills because he don't have money when he needs it. After tracking his spending, he develops a cash flow budget with an educator at a parenting class he took through the Cooperative Extension. Now, using the cash flow together, let's talk about making some recommendations for Raphael so he can make his ends meet. So I'm going to ask you guys to take a look at this, and then I'm going to ask your opinions, okay? So let's do this, okay? Here is Raphael's situation. All right. So if you can see the screen, he starts out this particular week, week number one, with $300. See, everybody can see that, okay? But now, remember jo Johanna was talking to us earlier and she gave us the example of this second job and the SNAP benefit and $300 for other, and other could be anything. There could be, it could have been Raphael's brother or sister could have given him $300 or it could have came from some other, maybe he did some side hustle thing, or maybe he's got a small business that he's working on that also is contributing money. The point is he needed to account for all of the income. So I want to make sure that as we do this, you account for every dollar that comes in when it does. So now we're looking at a total of $1,200 that he has in week one available. But now look at week number two. Now we're going to go to the expenses in a minute. I just, I just, we're just going to talk about the income right now. Okay. Just so that we are clear on what we're doing. So now week number two, his, his job, job one, uh, he got a thousand dollars there. He also gets that thousand dollars in week number four. So let's take a look at that. And then he gets the $200 seems to come in every week. So that's a weekly pay, but the other uh, benefit like the snap benefit only comes in once a month and then the other money only comes in once a month so that is his income picture 
And so the whole thing is, is looking at your income picture and seeing when does your money come in, what week, what day, all of that. And so you can really get track of it. Now, I'm going to keep going and we're going to make sense of the math here in a minute. Okay, now let's talk about some expenses here. Now, when we talk about expenses, now look at when things are due. So it looks like a cell phone is in week number three, the $80 that you see on the screen, the $80 here, that's week number three. He's got a debt payment, but look here, he's got a couple of debts he's paying, one at $250 a month, one at $350 a month, one at $100 a month. So he's paying debt. Throughout the month, he eats out every week at $25 a week. So, and that's all right. I mean, if he's if he's got the budget for it, it's all good, right? So it's $25 a week there. Then he's spending another $50 on his child care, which you see across all, all weeks. Then groceries and other supplies he's paying. That's kind of that differs for some reason in week number two than it does in any other week. So here's what we could do. Remember, we talked about control. What is it about week number two that has our groceries and supplies up a little bit higher than any other week of the month? Okay, so think about that. And then we've got the next expense category down here. We've got the uh, housing and utility. He's paying $800 in rent, and then he pays another $80 in, his, um, in utility bills. The point is, this is how Raphael's situation is going. But that's not the full story. We also have some additional scenarios happening. Let's look at the next portion here. He, so notice here, now look here, we've got a transportation $60 in week number one. We also have another $235 in week number two. So we would need to understand you know, the, the, the dynamics or what's happening in his life to where that particular week is that high. That could be some sort of payment for some services or whatever it is, but then he has $60 the rest of the month, and then other is $50 across the board. So here's where it gets interesting, and this is really where the value of this tool comes in. So I want you guys to notice and, and, and think about this. In week number one, he has a surplus of $115. Week number two, surplus of $580. But in week number three, he's down $15. Okay, in other words, he has $15 more expenses than he has available cash. Now, we know in reality, if you have more expenses than you have cash to spend, it's, it's just zero, right? There's just no more money left over, it's zero. But on paper, it says negative 15. But, but notice in week number four, there's a whole whopping $800 left over. So now, now this is where it comes in in terms of the value of this tool. So what do we need to do to kind of even this out? Because he's running pretty tight. Well, in week number one with $115 in, in, in leftover, that's not as tight. Week number two, he's got a little bit more of a cushion. But week number three, he's completely underwater. And so what we want to do is think about what kind of adjustments can be made. And so I'm going to share with you some questions that we could ask to figure that out. So when does Raphael run out of money? We saw that, that he ran out of money in week number three. All right. But I want to hear from some of you guys. And I want you guys to think about what can he do or try to do to better match the timing of his income with his expenses. Okay. So think about that. What are some of the things that, that you guys do? You can put this in the chat. What are some um, examples of things that you would do if, if, if this was your scenario or you had to make some decisions around this, what would we do to kind of even this cash flow situation out? What are your thoughts on that? And just feel free to put that in the chat. Clara says in week number two, he seemed to have more money, less bills. So he may want to move a bill to week number two. Absolutely. That's exactly right. They want to move a bill to week number two. That's right. So that we don't have that deficit. Absolutely. Thank you. That's, that's a great answer. And that's the benefit. Now, here's the thing. You got to also think about when Johanna mentioned how we get benefits. There's benefits also count because benefits helps to get certain things. In this particular example, SNAP is a scenario where obviously that, that pertains to food and groceries. So he's not having to spend 
as much cash at the grocery store when he's using his snap. Now, of course, people do still use their cash at grocery store. You guys know that. But the point is, is how does that snap benefit factor in into the cash flow? So the point is, we want to think about this from a bigger level. James says maybe only buying groceries twice a month when he has money. Yes, absolutely. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help people to make decisions that is going to be consistent with what is really going on for them so that we can eliminate that feeling that we're not in control. Just like when we talked about the financial well-being, present day um, security that moves into future security. And that really boils down what, what, what's happening on a week to week basis. But now next month is not included in the example. We didn't see what's what he's got coming for next month. But what would his situation be at the beginning of next month? If he doesn't make the recommendation that we got from Ms. Clara by moving a bill around, he's going to have that same problem again. And this is what happens with a lot of people. They, they may not have the foresight to begin to make adjustments that will have a permanent effect. And so I want you guys to start thinking about this. What kind of cash flow adjustments should you be making that's going to have a permanent effect so that as the months go by, things get a little bit easier. You have more surplus. You can take that money and save it or do other things with it, pay down debt. But the point is, we got to think about how we are making decisions and if these decisions are one-time decisions or are they permanent decisions that's going to keep us um, really keeping control throughout the whole year. So thank you guys so much for for actually um, helping us uh, have that discussion. But now here is another tool. Okay, I want to say this. Now, Raphael, that was kind of a, a real kind of a simple scenario, but here it is. When you guys are going into looking at your particular personal cash flow, there's another tool here called adjusting your cash flow. And this is what we have to think about. Now, this is really centered around helping you see the entire month. So you can see on the right-hand side of this slide, it's really geared towards helping you to put everything that you, you get in, in terms of income, you wanna put it down on the exact day that it comes in. So you go ahead and fill in the dates on this calendar and, um, and they all come blank like this. And so you just basically fill it in and then you fill in all your expenses. Now, this is gonna be interesting because I think that this is probably one of the most powerful tools ever because once you start putting down the actual days that the income hits. And I think mostly everybody remembers what day their income comes in or the day that they get their benefit. But does everybody put a date on their expenses? Like, for example, how many times a, uh, a month do you go to the store? So what you would do on this particular tool, if you know that you go to the score, store five times a month, then you're going to put down all five times that you spend at the store on this calendar. So you can physically, visually see where your cash is being spent and the timing of it. And th this is such an eye opener. Now, now I know this is gonna take a little bit of work because what, 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 what we're suggesting that you do, and I'm just, just saying, because the same principle you can apply in your business. You can think about when things come in, what expenses do you have and when do they need to be paid and plot it on the calendar. And if it doesn't match up to where the income is and you're having to dip into savings or dip into a credit card, things like that, we want to avoid that if possible. What we want to do is make sure that we align everything so that we can better have control in every week of the month. Now, here it is. All we're trying to do with these tools is to figure out where you might be coming up short. When? I mean, because we feel it when it happens, but maybe we just haven't taken enough time to really just pinpoint it. Well, what? wait a minute, what am I doing? What's happening here? And then there's the invisible money. Okay, let's talk about the invisible spending. So this is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you all a little bit. I'm gonna challenge you, I'm gonna say this. I want you to get your bank statements for the last three months, all right? And then get a highlighter. And I want you to highlight every expense that you made 
that was a discretionary expense. It could be going to the coffee shop, the Starbucks, or it could have been going to Walmart and buying some stuff. I mean, it could be all the unplanned stuff. This is what I want you to go. I want you to find out all the unplanned stuff and highlight it. And while you're at it, I want you to highlight every expense that you paid for that you could have done without. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> you could have done without. You want to do that. And so here's what's going to happen. You're going to do that for three months. I, want, I really want you all to do this. We, we just finished the month of March today, right? So let's just do it now. So as soon as you get your March bank statement, I want you to go from March to February to January and do this highlighting drill. And then I want you to add up the money. I want you to add up every money, every bit of every dollar that you spent in first quarter, right? That was discretionary that you forgot about, right? And that you probably could have done without spending that money. And then add it up and then take the average. Now, what are you gonna find? You're gonna find that you're spending money that you're not accounting for. <laughs> I mean, most likely. Now, I'm saying, if you do this, you're going to have a very good revelation that day because you're gonna say, wow. Um, you know, some of you may come up with, um, you know, over a hundred or two hundred dollars that you're spending, like, and not even really thinking about it, but you're spending it. And so, what we're suggesting that you do is then plug it into your calendar. Okay, I, just for fun, plug it into your calendar on the days that you know you spent, so that you can get the visual on it, and then you can make some decisions, and then do it both for personal, and do it for your business. Think about it from both perspectives, and that's what we wanted to share with you today to give you the opportunity to really gain control of your cash flow. Now, this is, a, this is not rocket science. It's, it's kind of simple when you think about it, but what it is, it's easy to think about, but harder to do, right? <laughs> and this is what we want to do. Easy to think about, harder to do. But what we want to do, we want to make it easier to do. And that's what these tools are for. These tools are designed to get you thinking about it, get it down in front of you on paper, make the adjustments, by putting it on a calendar, going back through your bank statements, seeing where you've spent, and then just having the conversation with yourself, where can I make adjustments so that you can have more money? Because now, if there is a surplus of income than, than expenses, that's great. And you'll probably find a higher surplus if you're, if you're making some of these adjustments that you're finding that you're spending money that you really don't need to spend. But the point is, if there is a deficit and you really need to uh, figure out how to get rid of the deficit, then what you may want to do is think about, well, well, how can I increase the income or go back to that cutting expenses document and see what you can do there. But that's what we wanted to share with you. I'm going to invite Johanna back uh, to, to join our conversation as we begin to wrap up for the day. And uh, she's going to share with you some additional resources. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Devin, for walking us through the tools um, and giving us this great, uh, great information. So, um, yeah, I just wanted us to take a quick look at some of before our time ends today and what you see here and what I'm going to post in the chat. is basically information on how you can order some of the CFP about the tools that we covered today. If you want to see what else is there um, that can help you with your personal finances and your business finances, um, take a look and visit, uh, uh, you know, the, the link. On, on the CFPB's website, you can order free uh, printed materials and those are shipped to you at no cost. Um, you can use the link in the chat. and. The links to order printed materials will usually take Pueblo, which is run by the US government publishing office in Pueblo, Colorado. So you'll see that reference and that, that's what that means. Um, just make sure that you provide a street address uh, because um, materials are not shipped to PO boxes. And they usually take between four or six weeks to arrive. So just keep that in mind and um, here is another great resource, if we can go to the next one. Um, 
when you or someone you know have a question about your finances, uh, you can visit the CFPB website and ask um, and use the, the Ask CFPB um, feature to ask questions. So there you'll find you know, pretty clear and impartial answers to hundreds of uh, financial questions. And you can explore these, um, uh, this information. It's accurate. It's vetted. Uh, it comes from trusted sources. So you can really trust that the information you're getting is, is accurate and, um, and from trusted sources. So search for questions. You can, for example, type in, how do I get my credit report? Um, and you'll see a variety of articles and tools that will show up. Uh, or you can explore by topic, like you can do a search for auto loans or prepaid cards uh, if you want to understand the you know, differences between some of those um, products out there in the market. Uh, you can do a search for student loans. So there's a lot of information that you can just search for, and we invite you to use this uh, feature. All right. Well, thank you, Johanna, for sharing those wonderful resources. And we certainly encourage everyone to get as many of those as possible. Get them for yourselves and others that in your family or in your, your colleagues in business in your community that could certainly use this material. And so we want to ask you before we go, we, and also we can open it up for some Q&A, and I'm going to invite James to come back as well. Uh, what's an important takeaway uh, for you from today's training? What's something that you believe that you got out of our time together? And then at the same time, we also want to ask you, what is something that you'd like to learn more about? Because you know, James and Derek, they're, they're doing a great job of, of leading this, the program, and you guys do lots of great things. And so if there's anything else that you think that you may want, uh, you know, we're certainly encouraging you all to let them know as well so do that but um but yeah just go ahead and put in the chat your thoughts on either of those questions oh thank you miss clara keep track of your spending absolutely yes thank you johanna for putting the link in the chat anyone else want to comment on what was your takeaway from today's training on cash flow budgeting. I think for me, so keeping track of expenses, those that you don't think and have no idea how they're impacting your budget. Right. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because uh, you can just go and get a little snack or something. If you're out doing stuff and you need a little snack, that's an expense, but how many people actually account for it in their in their budget? So that that's 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 right. So that's what we're saying. But thank you, Johanna. All right. Yeah, well, I, I, I will take this opportunity to just say thank you to to all that attended this or uh, you know, are are uh, watching it. Um, after this, we are going to record this and post it to YouTube. So so wanted to thank. Uh, the, the, the people in the present and the people in the future. Um, and uh, I, I hope that um, y'all enjoyed this and, and it sounds like we, we, we got some stuff out of it. Um, so wanted to thank Devin and Johanna um, and all the, the attendees uh, for, for coming. Um, and uh, that's, that's really all, all I have. Um, Devin or Johanna, do you have anything else? I, I know Johanna has a couple things and Devin has a yeah. couple things, but... Yeah, no, really just um, uh, encourage post uh, training survey. So uh, same as before, you can uh, here on the screen or you can uh, use the QR code by using your, your list for you. But um, if you can give us your feedback, it helps us improve our trainings. And a big thank you all to all for, for attending. Yeah, and the final thing I'll say is, um, you know, do your best to, you know, gain control. It, it's really about, you know, doing what we can to actually insulate ourselves from future things that could come up. Um, like, like we all know, we didn't expect the pandemic to happen. We didn't know it was coming, but it came, right? And so now, you know, let's take this opportunity to do what we can to really go back and think about my future 
financial well-being and what can I do to absorb future financial shocks by simply being better, um, being in better control of your cash flow today and being able to direct more money to the things that mean something to you, saving more, uh, maybe investing more, buying more things for your business, um, whatever you need to do. But that's why we are here uh, to give you this information. But thank you so much for giving us your time today. Uh, take care. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, James and Johanna. Thank you all too. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys.